We change it up a bit today and actually do some wrenching on a 2007 Cadillac Escalade. Specifically, the vapor canister solenoid valve. We'll show you when we get back. I'm Tim Johnson. You're watching Shop Tool Reviews. So this applies to all the GM uh, trucks, the light trucks, as well as the larger SUVs. So your, your Cadillac Escalade, your GMC Yukon, your Chevrolet Suburbans, and then your Silverados and such, all have this vapor canister solenoid valve uh, that actually lets the, lets the gas tank like breathe, basically. So mine showed up, my code showed up by actually at the gas pump, and it wouldn't take any gas. It'd like put in three quarters of a gallon and click. So Imagine trying to fill up a 25 gallon tank like a tenth of a gallon at a time. So anyway, that's how mine showed up and it actually had some codes as well. Uh, and then this is basically what it is. And again, it's a solenoid valve that somehow opens and closes, letting that uh, tank breathe so that it's actually, you know, exhausting any of those uh, uh, harmful vapors, but actually filtering it through a, through a larger charcoal filter. That canister's under there as well, but that's not the part we had to replace. Now, it's pretty easy to do so. I, without filming, I probably could have done this in you know, 30 minutes and simple tools to do it. A couple of lights, uh, just to, so it was handy actually, so you could see on the, on the camera. A 13 millimeter wrench, um, my sonic screwdriver, which that may make sense to somebody that knows Doctor Who. I don't, but anyway, flat blade screwdriver, a couple of zip ties that I added to the, uh, the, the loom that it came with, and then some side cutters to trim the zip ties basically. And then I use my impact driver with a, with a uh, T30 or a Torx um, 30 bit on it to actually remove the filler neck. Now basically this is a, you know, in the SUV case, drop the spare tire. I'm not gonna show drop in the spare tire. It's pretty self-explanatory, but drop the spare tire and then everything's really accessible right there. Uh, again, take the bolts out of the filler neck or the two T30 Torx and the, and the plastic retainer. Um, pull that down and then you've pretty much got access to about everything other than cutting some zip ties. So I'll let you follow along as we do it. Sorry for the shaky camera. Uh, again, I just wanted to show this because really I couldn't find anything that was specific to the Escalade. There was a lot of things on Suburbans and trucks and things like that. Uh, but I wanted to show one specific to the Escalade. So this is it. So again, follow along. Sorry for the bumps and the shaky camera and the, and the lights. But uh, anyway, maybe this will help you out. Let us know. So if you have trouble filling up the gas in your GM SUV, large SUV, or uh, Silverado trucks, uh, pretty simple fix. It is basically part of the evaporation, uh, ev evaporative system. Um, and this is basically a breather um, that lets the tank breathe as you're adding up fuel, basically. Uh, filters out vapor, you know, fuel vapor, etc. cetera. Um, so that's what makes the pump click on and off. And so you'll need um, this setup here, which this is specific to the Escalade, but I think they're pretty much the same on Tahoe's Escalades, everything else. The process is still much the same, even though location may be a little different. Um, and then most cases, you'll need this little uh, harness adapter as well. I'll put the, uh, the product numbers in the description. Um, pretty simple process. First thing is you want to drop the spare, especially if it's on an SUV. Uh, and I'm not going to go through that, but basically you get your your tire iron kit out and you put it in the hole there after you use your key to get that out and you drop the spare tire um, and then everything else is pretty much done underneath the car except except um, with this um, basically we got uh, two Torx T30s right here either T25 T30 I believe they're T30 uh, take those out and then take this plastic clip off and we're going to pull that filler neck all the way down under the car you first going to take this little clip off Pull it out. Now we're going to use our T30. Back those out. Okay, so pardon the shakiness as we roll into the car. Just wanted to give you kind of a relation of where we're at under here. Um, so we're on the driver's side of the car, back behind it. Um, and there is the filler neck that we just loosened up. Um, so we can pull all that down. I'll do that in a moment. And then you can just basically trace these lines as they run through. So right here is the new evaporative canister. And here is the breather that runs off. And it runs up here and it runs up that gas filler neck. Now this line right here is the new hard plastic line that's already on the new canister. And it runs over the top of this cross member here. I'm calling it a cross member, not sure if that's the correct term. Uh, and then it runs down 
So that's your actual uh, charcoal canister there. And there's a blank nipple on the back side, on the other side of those two there that you can reach by hand. And so here is what goes on the nipple of that evaporative canister. And it's very easy here. So you'll see there's a little push in the indentation right here. And as you push that, that clip, that clip will expand there. So it expands out and then you can just slide it off of that nipple. So basically you can take a screwdriver. I took my fingertip and just pushed in, pushed in on that clip and then I was able to pull that off and then you can pull it out from under this cross member here and it's ready to come off now. So on that canister, that bracket right there uh, goes over the, over the top. It's like kind of an, an S there. And then it's basically a, a 13 millimeter wrench to get that off. So to get that off, just a 13 millimeter wrench Ratchet wrench works really well. Take that off and that canister will drop down. Okay, so we've got our 13 millimeter bolt out. And now this canister you can see is now free. We just need to unhook the wire. And then uh, and unfish that, that breather tube that goes to the, uh, to the filler neck. Pull that down. Here's that clip I'm talking about. And this was on the new one. So to show you a little better. Um, so you see when you push that in it spreads those jaws so then you can get it off that nipple so just push that in hard and you could take a screwdriver and do that so you can see this canister the new one it actually comes with the uh, with the correct mounting plated on there right now I think that's the only difference when you look at the between the trucks and such uh, maybe that mounting bracket pretty much everything else is the same uh, but anyway this comes with it also uh, you want this new little wiring house wiring adapter because on the vehicle it's got one of course that hooks to there and as you look on this one on the new one you see it's got a different connector for actual this part to go into so for this part then you can slide that on there and now that's locked into place. So now we got the new wiring harness on there or the new uh, adapter is locked on there. And then when we put this up, we can just plug in, this into the existing wiring harness. So there's the old breather tube there. And you see there's uh, some other breather tubes as well, like for the rear end, uh, for the rear diff, I think it's over there. Um, but all we're gonna do is we're gonna take some side cutters or some diagonal cutters or whatever you wanna call them, dikes and Got my baby ones here. Gonna cut those and then remove this existing one and put the new one in. So now that we have the uh, all the wire ties cut off of this, now we can actually take it from here and pull that thing out. Just know where you're where that goes to also pull this out so now we're free ready to install our new one so as you can see these are a little bit different um, and in fact I just noticed that the actual uh, um, uh, brace is actually a little different as well we'll see if it actually goes on the mount um, and then the uh, the hoses are routed just a little bit different as well um, but we'll see but as far as everything else should be Okay, so uh, let's get it in and see what happens. Okay, first thing I'm gonna do here is uh, take this in here. It hooks to actually our evaporative, our evaporative canister and go ahead and feed it over this kind of cross member or whatever. I'm working one-handed by the way, it'd be a lot easier than this. Get it over there. This line actually runs over this and then runs kind of over the top of that uh, evaporative canister like that. And then should be able to reach in here. And again, connect to the nipple and just push it on. So I just pushed it on, it's back behind this right here. Very easy to do. So now that's connected and you see how it's molded to run under that right there and then over the top 
of the cross member and then we can continue to hook that up. So now that we've got this, uh, this line hooked up here um, and now we can take the canister here and we can place it where it mounts to. Again, it was a little bit different mount, but it, uh, it is gonna work. Um, so you can see here, there's two holes right there. And so let's see if we can take the canister here and we put it through that hole there. Now that's where our bolt goes into our 13 millimeter bolt. So we'll put that in, 13 millimeter wrench, easily put that in. So this, uh, this new harness adapter comes with this little metal clip here. So we can e easily put it in this hole here and slide it onto the frame and I'll lock it in, give it kind of a mounting point and then we can just uh, connect our existing wiring harness. So we are bolted in, there's our new canister or solenoid, whatever you want to call it. It's uh, wired in and attached and so now all we've got to do is hook up the vent tube which is here. So that's going to follow that uh, that gas neck, the filler neck, and we're going to zip tie it along the way. So this is the end of our new vent tube. We're going to slide it along over here. And Now we pull it and we want to zip tie it to all these lines as well. So I've zip tied this in a couple places and by the, by the way it comes with zip ties on it. They also say to drill a hole in the, uh, in the uh, body of the uh, where it connects to, the, to your car as far as the, um, the fuel filler to drill a quarter inch or seven millimeter hole and then put a push clip in it that actually goes in right here. I'm not going to worry about that. I'm just going to zip tie it right there. It goes up into that pocket. I, I don't think it's going to bother it. If so, I can do that later. But just so you know, that's what they say to do is to drill a hole and put one of those push uh, plastic push clips. Some people call them Christmas tree uh, looking deals. Um, typically you see them in interiors and things. But anyway, they say to do that to connect this to this. But like I said, I've just got it zip tied there and we're going to put the gas filler tube back up there and get this bolted back up. So now we're going to put our uh, uh, we put our plastic clip back in there, um, and then we're going to tighten up our T30 bolts. There we go. Should be done here. By the way, I used an extra two zip ties to keep things tidy, uh, like one that's right here um, near the near what we just installed um, and then the other one near the gas filler neck so just used a couple extra zip ties again just to kind of keep things tidy and there's the extra zip tie and there's the gas filler neck already bolted up clip installed and everything so everything should be good to go so there you have it pretty simple process like I said probably a 30 45 minute job uh, if you don't have camera and lights and everything else trying to follow you around or trying to handle those and get good shots or decent shots uh, so pretty simple project even for a DIYer and a pro guys definitely gonna be able to knock this out quickly um, and by the way got to put back together put the uh, the code reader on it cleared the codes and no more codes now my remote start works that's another thing if if this thing starts going bad and it starts throwing a code it will not let you remote start so now my remote start works and now i can put fuel in the vehicle gallons at a time not cups at a time so if you don't mind click like and subscribe if you like this little simple bumpy bumpy ride of a video uh, also click that bell notifications to be notified of new videos uh, check out our tool reviews uh, and also keep track of us on instagram facebook and twitter have a great day